Welcome to Beside the Burn for Friday the 25th of October. Uh, we come to the end of the week and on Fridays recently we have been looking together at the Westminster Shorter Catechism. And I hope these uh, little thoughts on the Catechism uh, have been encouraging you and helping you uh, to understand what we believe as Christians. I know sometimes these things can seem a little bit complicated, uh, but do remember we used to learn these as children uh, and hopefully that's uh, bringing back some memories for you as well. So today we come to question 27 and question 27 is all about Christ's humiliation. The question is wherein did Christ's humiliation consist? And the idea here is that we've been thinking recently about Jesus Christ and the offices that he executes. He's a prophet, he's a priest, and he's a king. And we discover that he executes these three offices, these three jobs that he has as prophet, priest, and king in two different states. One state is exaltation, and as you can imagine, his exaltation is Jesus in heaven at the side of his father reigning on the throne. But then Jesus' humiliation is him coming in humility to this world and living here on this world. And humiliation we often think of as a a terrible thing. We think of it as something that is done to another person. Another person is humiliated. But here we see that Jesus' humiliation is his own choice. He chooses to humble himself. And he humbles himself by moving from the throne in heaven to the grave on earth. And then he is exalted, as we'll see in the next question, he is exalted whenever he moves from the grave to the throne. So there's this two-way process, starting off in heaven, coming down to earth, ending up in the grave. That's his humiliation. But then his exaltation is as he rises from the dead and goes back to the throne in heaven. So how was Jesus humbled? How was Christ brought low? And we, we also see here that humiliation is the opposite of exaltation. It's not the opposite of pride. We have a world that values pride, but being humble here, whenever we're talking about Jesus, is not the opposite of pride. It's the opposite of exaltation. And Jesus values humility. So let's read the answer, which is detailed and has a a lot in it theologically. But if you just remember this idea that we're speaking about Jesus, how he has humbled himself, how he has become humble, and that is done through him coming to earth, being born here, living his life, dying his death, being buried and ending up in the grave. So the answer that's given to question 27 is Christ's humiliation consists in his being born and that in a low condition, made under the law, undergoing the miseries of this life, the wrath of God and the cursed death of the cross in being buried and continuing under the power of death. For a time. So, as I say, it's a detailed answer, but it's all very understandable. Christ's humiliation, him humbling himself, consists of or involves him being born, and he is born in a lowly state. He is not born as a human prince, he's not born in a royal palace, but he is laid in a manger, in a stable among the animals. He is in a low condition. He has humbled himself so that he can identify with us and so that he is able to understand what we go through in our lives. He is under the law. 
And this is a remarkable statement about Jesus because Jesus is the lawgiver. He is the one who has set this law in place and yet here he comes and humbles himself under his own law. He undergoes the miseries of this life. In other words, Jesus experiences the very things that we experience. On occasion, he was sad. We think of whenever Lazarus, his good friend, died and he wept. At times, he was hungry. At times, he was angry with what he saw in the temple. So Jesus is undergoing these miseries of life that we undergo. Having lived a perfect life in heaven, he humbles himself and becomes man and takes on all these things. Then, crucially, Jesus experiences the wrath of God himself. Not because of anything that Jesus has done, but because Jesus has taken our sin upon himself. Now, it's interesting to uh, think here about what happens when Jesus takes our sin upon himself. Jesus is punished because of that sin, but Jesus himself does not become a sinner. We are the ones who are sinners. We are the ones who have sinned. We hand our sin over to Jesus and he accepts it and he pays the price for our sin, but he never sins himself. So in his humiliation, He experiences the wrath of God. God is angry because of the sin and Jesus takes the punishment for that sin. The wages of sin is death and Jesus dies for our sin. Next part of the catechism says, and the cursed death of the cross. Cursed is anyone hung on a tree and Jesus takes that curse because of our sin. And that in a way is the ultimate humiliation that he suffers and dies for all to see. And this is the king of glory, the one who has created everyone around him. And yet in humility, he dies in our place. He then carries on this humiliation in being buried and continuing under the power of death for a time. He is under death for three days. He is silenced. He is buried. This is humiliation of the highest order for the Son of God to allow himself that once he was seated on a throne in heaven and now he is buried in a tomb. And this should cause us to to love Jesus more. Why would Jesus humble himself like this? Why would he subject himself to this level of humiliation? Simply because he loves us and he cares for us and he wants us to dwell with him for eternity. He shows love to us. He helps us realise how evil sin is. Whenever we see the consequences of sin on the perfect Son of God, we realise what our sin is doing day by day. Sin is not attractive because it causes the humiliation of Jesus Christ. And so we must realise just how serious our sin is that Jesus had to humble himself and live in humiliation so that we could be forgiven. What a wonderful saviour we have. So wherein did Christ's humiliation consist? Christ's humiliation consisted in his being born and that in a low condition, made under the law, undergoing the miseries of this life, the wrath of God and the cursed death of the cross and being buried and continuing under the power of death for a time. Take a moment or two today and maybe over the weekend to meditate on what this means, to meditate on Christ humiliated 
for us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we meditate on your humiliation today, we thank you, Lord, that this was not something that was done against your will, but something that you freely took upon yourself. You humbled yourself and came to this earth so that we might have forgiveness for our sins. Lord, whenever we put it in these stark terms of your humiliation, we realise just how serious our sin is and we come seeking the forgiveness that you offer. Lord, help us never to take these things lightly, but help us to trust in you today, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.